Good evening all of you. The topic of today's lecture is fundamental unit of life. By life we mean the living organisms. Now question arises what are the living organisms composed of composed of or what is the fundamental unit of a living organism and the answer is the cell. So first of all we will be talking about the cell. So how can we define a cell? The cell can be defined as a functional and structural unit of life which means all the living organisms are composed of the cells. Also, a cell can be defined as a mass of protoplasm that is bounded by or surrounded by a limiting membrane that is also called as cell membrane or plasma membrane. So, it can also be defined as mass of protoplasm. that is surrounded by a limiting membrane or we can just say membrane. That membrane can only be the plasma membrane or as in case of plant cell it can be plasma membrane plus the cell wall. It is important to note that all the living organisms are composed of the cells and cells are microscopic units. Generally, they are very small in size. Microscopic means the cells are so small in size that they can only be observed with the help of microscope, but they cannot be observed with the naked eye. So, all the living forms or living organisms, be it animal or plant, are composed of the cells, which are generally microscopic. Now there are certain terminologies that we must know about the cell. The first terminology is the cytology. Now what is cytology? Cytology can be simply defined as the branch of biology that deals with the study of structure and the composition of a cell. So what is the basic structure of a cell? What is it consist of and what is its composition, chemical composition? It all is dealt with in the cytology. There is one more term that is called as cell biology. In cell biology, again, it is a branch of biology that deals with the study of cell. But here, we study the complete aspect of cell, which means that besides studying the structure and composition, we also study the functional aspect of the cell. So, cell biology deals with study of cell in all aspects. So, we can say in short that cell biology is the complete study of the cell. Now, the question arises that who discovered the cell for the first time and the credit goes to Robert Hooke. This type of cell which he discovered was a dead cell. And he studied these cells in the cork slide. Cork is the outermost layer of the plant stem which is commonly also known as the bark of the plant. And he discovered this cell in the year 1665. That is second half of the 17th century. And he described the structure of the cell in his book called Micrographia. When Robert Hooke observed this cell, the first dead cell in the slice of cork under the microscopic invented by himself, these cells appear like the uh, compartments, small box-like compartments or the beehives 
or honeycomb and he also termed the coin cellule which means small compartment so the credit of uh, giving the term cell also goes to robert hooke the appearance of cell is like as follows under microscope he could observe structures or small compartments hexagonal compartments like this arranged packed together and this is similar to the beehive or honeycomb so he could observe numerous compartments like this the credit of discovering the first living cell goes to anton von leeuwenhoek in short he is also known as av leeuwenhoek before that it is also important uh, to know that uh, the cell is derived from greek word cellule uh, which means a small compartment and this term was coined by robert hooke himself which means small compartment or a room and the cell word was cell term was coined by robert hooke now coming back to the discovery of living cell the living cell was discovered for the first time by av leeuwenhoek so remember a clear difference that the first dead cell was discovered by robert hooke but the first living cell was discovered by anton von leeuwenhoek there is one more important term related with the cell that is protoplasm as we have also discussed in its definition that cell is a mass of protoplasm so basically protoplasm is also known as the physical basis of life and it is the living component of a cell and on the basis of protoplasm we can distinguish between a living cell and a dead cell if the protoplasm is present then we consider it as a living cell but if the protoplasm is absent we consider it as a dead cell so actually the dead cells discovered by uh, robert hooke were nothing but just the cell walls they were lacking any type of protoplasm and protoplasm can be defined as the cell without uh, cell membrane or everything which is present present inside a cell except the cell membrane is called as protoplasm and protoplasm was discovered by Felix Dujardin but he called it as proto instead of calling it as protoplasm he coined the term sarcode the actual term protoplasm was coined by Purkinje in 1839 now as i told you earlier also uh, that protoplasm is the uh, mass of cell that is bounded by cell membrane or cell membrane plus cell wall so we can define protoplasm as cell without covering membrane so everything present inside the cell including the cytoplasm nucleus if present is considered as the protoplasm now about its uh, existence about its consistency the protoplasm consistency differs under different condition and it exists in sol gel state which means that it can occur in solution state as well as in gel like state solution state means fluid state and gel means semi solid jelly like so it can exist in both the states as per the requirement of the 
cell. Now, if we talk about its chemical composition, the protoplasm is a mixture of mixtures or supermixture and it consists of various chemicals like water, which is present in the maximum amount, ions, salts, minerals, and other organic compounds like carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, lipids or fats, nucleic acid. Some of these substances are soluble in water and some are insoluble in water. So they can exist in solution state or colloidal state. So this is the general introduction about the cell. Have a good day.